This is a video to help you review for the third exam in Phys 221. And I want to go through the topics that we talked about since the last exam that you can expect to see some questions about on this exam. One of the topics is electric fields associated with a plane of charge. And make sure you understand what the, how to deal with a plane of charge. Basically, you have a certain amount of charge Q that you put on the plane, and it spreads itself out and becomes a charge density, which is equal to Q divided by the area of the plane. So the plane is going to have a given area here. And so the charge density for a plane of charge is coulombs per square meter. So that is what you use to determine the electric field strength near the, near the plane. Now we're assuming an infinite plane. Of course, this does not look like an infinite plane, but when you're close to it, it seems like an infinite plane, as you hopefully saw in the last lab when we're talking about uh, brightness near a, a, a plane of light. Same kind of idea. As you get further away from the plane, if the plane's big, the brightness doesn't change, so nor does the electric field. And the electric field associated with a plane of charge if it's positive charge, I'm just going to draw the plane like this. The electric field is going to be directed away from the plane of charge, both that way and that way, because there's going to be positive charge both on either side of the plane, and so the electric field is always directed away from the positive charge. And the strength of the electric field associated with a single plane, of course, is sigma over 2 epsilon 0. And the direction to the right of the plane is i hat, to the, to the left of the plane is negative i hat, the way the plane is oriented here anyway. Now what we did in class is we actually had two planes of charge, one being positive. This one here is positive, let's say. In class we had the case where you had two planes of charge, one of which is positive, and the other of which was negative. Probably should have drawn red as positive and blue as negative, but anyway. But if you have this case here, then since the electric fields at this point there are effect, are caused by the red plane of charge and the blue plane of charge, they're going to be in opposite directions. They're going to cancel out. So there's no electric field out here. There's no electric field in there. All the electric field is confined to the region here. And because it's a combination of the electric field from the blue plane of charge and the red plane of charge, the electric field there is going to be equal to sigma over epsilon zero where again, sigma is the charge density, coulombs per square meter. So you have to know the square meter of the plate and the amount of charge put on the plate. You can calculate your sigma. And epsilon zero, of course, is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And it is, let's see, it's coulomb squared per meters squared Newton. I think that's right. All right, so that's when you have two planes of charge inside of it, that's the electric field. And so it's always directed from the positive to the negative, And that's what defines the direction. So that was something we did see on one of the quizzes. And the solutions to all the quizzes are posted. So please take a look at those. Electric fields on and around conductors. So if you have a conductor, draw a picture of a conductor, um, the electric field uh, basically near the conductor, if you, have, if you put some charge on the conductor, it's going to have, that charge is going to spread itself out because it doesn't like to be near itself. It doesn't like to be near other plus charges. So if it's a net plus charge on the conductor, that charge is going to want to spread itself out, be all over the conductor. Near the conductor, it actually looks kind of like you're near a plane of charge. Think about it like that. So there's going to be an electric field around the conductor that's going to be associated with that positive charge. It's going to be pointed away from it. Within the conductor, though, even if the conductor is solid or whether it's solid or hollow, within it, if you put charge on the outside of that conductor, that charge is going to sit on the outside of the conductor. Inside the conductor, again, the charge is zero. Not, sorry, not only the charge, but the, the electric field inside the conductor is zero, whether it's a solid conductor or 
a hollow conductor, because the charge sits on the outside, uh, there's a couple ways you could look at it. The electric fields are all directed away, but they also, they cancel out within the conductor, nothing, even if the conductor is hollow. So this is why if you're, if you're in a lightning storm or in a car, you're safe in a, you're safe to stay in your car. Don't get out of your car. Even if your car got struck by lightning, the charge would remain on the outside of the car. So you'd be safe. And this is a little demonstration of this. I have on the door of my office that you can't, none of you can see right now, but it says I survived the chamber of death where I was at some electro electrical museum up in Bellingham, Washington, and went inside this big metal cage and they struck it with huge AC voltages and there were sparks flying off the cage and I was fine. I was inside the cage, no electric fields in there. I could even touch the cage and I was fine. That doesn't mean that the conductor has zero potential. It might have zero electric field inside of it, but the potential uh, is whatever the potential is on any one part of the conductor. So if the potential in one part of the conductor is 9 volts, the potential everywhere around the conductor is 9 volts. It's going to be 9 volts here, 9 volts here. It's like a wire. Remember, a wire is a conductor. So if you have a potential of a wire and it's 9 volts above the ground, let's say, so this is 9 volts, uh, and this is a resistor. Everywhere, well, I'm sorry, let me put another resist. Let me, uh, let me put another resistor here. Actually, let me put a battery here. There, plus 9 volts, and I'll make this the batteries 0 here. So this is a 9-volt battery. So everything on this side of the wire is 9 volts. This is a conductor, this is a conductor. It's all 9 volts. Now, when it crosses the resistor, down here it's zero volts. Everything over here is zero volts. But it's the same thing that everywhere on the conductor has the same potential. As long as the conductor is touching all of these here. The conduct this conductor is not touching this one because there's a resistor in the way. So there's that nine volt drop across the resistor. So that's the same thing as um, putting a conductor in an electric field. The surface of the conductor will be at some potential, and everything on the conductor at that surface will be at that potential, too, and within the conductor, too. It'll all be at 9 volts, but there won't be any electric field there. The electric field's all outside of it. So you can have zero electric field, but a non-zero potential. And you saw that when we had pairs of charges. Uh, a dipole, for instance. I'll just emphasize that point. We had a dipole here, plus and minus. There's a strong electric field here, but what's the potential at the point directly in between them? Well, the potential from this one, this is a hill, that's a hole, right in between them, it's you're kind of like at sea level. So that's zero potential there. But there's a really strong electric field right here, strong electric field, it's pointed this way, but zero potential. So electric field and potential are related. Uh, potential, you know, the, uh, the electric field is basically the change in potential. So if you have a big, steep potential, you have a strong electric field. And for those of you who are biology students, that's what happens at cell walls. You actually have electric fields at cell walls, huge electric fields, because you have differences in potential on both sides of the cell wall, and it's a really small distance. So that, really, that corresponds to a very large electric field. So this has definite biological implications. Okay, a couple more review topics. I'll probably do another video. I don't want to do, make any video too long. Capacitors and dielectrics. I'm going to say something about those. All right, so if you have a capacitor here, two parallel plates, the capacitance is equal to, if it's a vacuum separating the two plates, or basically air, we go with air, then the capacitance is epsilon zero times A divided by D, where A is the area of one plate. We're assuming both plates have the same area, A. And D is the separation between the plates. And this has to be in meters, and that has to be in meters squared. So you have to do the right unit conversions to get those correct in order to calculate the capacitance. Now, sometimes you, we have a dielectric in here.
The dielectric basically is something that the molecules within the dielectric align themselves with the electric field. And that actually results, as we talked about in class, with a larger capacitance. So with a dielectric, the capacitance is the same equation, but you multiply it times the dielectric constant. And we did something like this in lab, where we actually measured dielectric constants based upon the capacitance that we measured when putting something in between two plates. All right, I'm going to stop here, and then I'll do another video for review, to continue the review.